a gentleman who has led the Carr Cougars to four consecutive state championships, a phenomenal accomplishment. Looking for, I guess, the, the one for the pinky finger this year, right? It's my good and great friend Bryce Brown of the Carr Cougars. Bryce, great to have you with us. Welcome, and I think this is a good day for high school football, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think, uh, number one, thank you for having me on, but I think the, the main thing is, like you just mentioned, we're waiting for the governor and the mayor to, to all be on the same page so we could get some direction so we could we could get these kids rolling and, and give them something to do. Um, I think they, they adhere to all the guidelines. They're doing what they're supposed to do. So hopefully uh, we can leave politics out of this and make the right decision for the, for the kids. Yeah, and, and this is really not about politics. And I wish that people would completely put that aside because – I have not spoken to a coach that doesn't want to play yet. I have not spoken to a coach whose players don't want to play yet. And I've probably spoken to almost 100 now over the past three weeks. And I'm sure that's the way you feel. You want to play and your kids want to play, correct? Correct. Correct. I think that's the main thing we're talking about here, Mr. T, is that everybody's on the same page except for the people making the decision. And guess what? I get it. We're talking about safety. We're talking about, you know, uh, people's lives at stake. But guess what? We're saving lives out here on this football field, too. So I just I just won't, don't want that being overlooked. You know how many lives that, you know, all of these coaches in the city, around the state, are impacting every single day because these kids have something to look forward to. It's not just about throwing the ball around. It's about Number one, staying active. Number two, staying off the street. And number three is not being a part of the problem, but the solution and, and trying to better our kids. I think that's the main thing that we need to hit on. And I just hope that they make the right decision because all of these coaches, they want to keep reaching their kids and teaching their kids. But we can't do that if, if everybody isn't on the same page. So I just hope for the best in this situation. I have maintained that the schools are the safest places for these young men and women because the schools have taken every precaution imaginable to take care of them. It's when you turn them loose and they're out in public, to me, that is the bigger threat. Do you feel that way as well? I think so. I think you hit that right on the head. The school is the safest place for these kids, number one, because you know where they're not at? They're not on the street. They're not They're not selling drugs. They're not getting into mischief. They're not getting into trouble. You know, I think that's the main thing that schools provide well, sometimes school for a regular student provides a safe haven for these kids, away from their home life, away from situations at home. But guess what? After school, they have a way to release that and and play football, play, be around teammates. Man, there's been so many times this quarantine period, this pandemic, where I have kids struggling with depression because they're not having a sense of normalcy. I had kids who been hospitalized for attempting suicide. You know, that's the issue that we're talking about. But the last time that I was taught, Mr. Trey, the last time I was taught, I was taught about a great head coach in the great leader getting a fire. So I'm, I'm urging our city leaders, our state leaders, come see what these kids are doing. Come see a practice. Come see what they're actually doing. Come see how we're following the guidelines. Come see how we're supposed to just to come. Come be a part of it. Get in the fire and come see these kids and come support them as well. Visiting with Bryce Brown of Carr High School. And, of course, I, I read the whole story that I had today. And, and with regard to Mayor Cantrell, those comments were, I guess for me the right word would be uh, peculiar or maybe even troubling because – Carr High School is in Orleans Parish. So if we don't get out of phase two based on the governor's order, if she holds true to what she said today, that's going to make it impossible for schools in Orleans Parish. And a number of coaches have asked me this afternoon, uh, what do you think would we be able to play our games out of the parish, such as in Jefferson Parish? I don't know the answer to that. Have you thought ahead that far yet? Would that be a possibility? I mean yeah, we, we've had some talks, but, you know, we're, we're holding off for good news uh, next week, and we're just holding on, but we have some things in the work. You know, I just hope that that isn't the case, that we have all of these surrounding states, all our surrounding parishes playing football, and where you have two teams in Conn, Warren, Eastern, who's been to the state championship for the last two years, 
kids have to be disappointed and sit at home and watch another program or another team play, and they have to sit at home and not and not be a part of that. I think that would be num- number one, unethical and, and, and unmoral. So I think, you know, I think that's the main thing I'm trying to hit on. Because when when it's time for, for election time and it's time for politics, these are people who use these venues to 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 campaign for office and stuff like that. So now when it's time to be a part of it, now we're gonna turn our backs on. I don't think that's the time for that. I think that's the time it's the time that we need to really be behind our kids and show that we behind them where we're not against them, that we for them. Yeah, I take the politics out of this completely because this isn't about Democrat or Republican. It's not about rich or poor. It's not about black or white. It's not about public or private. It's about the greater good and these kids that work so hard to have an opportunity and the coaches that work so hard. If the children, the players, student athletes, the coaches, the parents, the school administrators are all in favor of letting this happen, why don't you let it happen? And if someone doesn't want to participate, and talking to Mr. Bonine earlier today, he said that there was probably about 7 to 10% of people that said they wouldn't want to play in terms of all the schools in the state. Well, just don't play. Opt out. Yeah. But don't deprive everybody else, correct? Right, because that's a part of the LHSA guidelines anyway, that every kid has to sign a participation form. Uh, extracurricular activities is a is a voluntary sport. It, it, of sport it is and it is mandated. If I had two kids that told me today, coach, you know my parents don't want me to play football. I'm gonna stay home and we're just gonna ride this pandemic out. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna support them. But that might not be the case for the other hundred kids that I have here who want to play and who want to compete and who want to 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 really stay a part of some sense of normalcy. And I think that's what's being overlooked. Just because two kids or three kids opt out, what about the rest of the hundred? No doubt. And then, of course, that brings me to to the executive director Eddie Bonine. I have given him very high grades throughout this process because I think. It's very clear he was for the kids from day one that he wanted to make sure that they had a chance to play in all sports. So what the LHSA did was kick the can down the road every chance they could to keep the hope alive, to keep the opportunity alive that they could play sports, not just football, but volleyball, cross country, everything that takes place. And I thought today, uh, once he spoke, I thought he did a great job. And obviously it was great to have uh, the educators support it as well. So, I know people always, always want to cast aspersions at others, but in this particular case, I give the LHSA and Eddie Bonine a lot of credit. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, you, you're hitting it right on the head, Mr. T. I think we just have to leave the politics out of it. If it's voluntary for the kids, let them just play. If, if we have the educators supporting it, if we have our principals supporting it, the school, the athletic directors, the – the superintendents, if everybody is on the same page, and guess what? I get it, uh, the pressure that they're under being being in the office that they have because we don't want to make the wrong decision. But the wrong decision has to be made not by them. They don't can't decide for somebody else's kid. They can, it's not their job to decide how how they somebody how somebody runs their household. It's their job to give people an opportunity. And I think that's what we all about is giving kids the opportunity, not taking away opportunity, but providing it. Meanwhile, right now, the, the talk and what Mr. Bonine said today was an eight-game season. So if it's eight games starting October 8th, that means that there's going to be one less round of playoffs. It won't affect the select schools because they don't have the numbers to fill a 32-team bracket, but it clearly affects the non-select side, uh, which you're part of, which means – you'd be reducing the playoff field from 32 to 16. Uh, that's unfortunate for a lot of people. It hasn't affected Carr. You've been a top 16 seed, obviously, for several years now. But what about that, playing more regular season games and playing one less round of playoffs? You know, I think I would be more in favor to the 32 team format just because of that, just about giving kids the opportunity to compete even if it's, it's, it's one of the lesser programs that's around, give those kids the opportunity to say, listen, I made the state playoffs. I, I competed at the highest level of football in the state of Louisiana. 
you know, for me, you know, we, we just picked up Curtis uh, today. Week five, we have to switch that game from week one to week five. So we're going to play the best teams. But I think uh, the key is, like we're talking about, is, yeah, do we do we focus on the playoffs? Do we focus on the regular season? I think if a kid can make the state playoffs in the state of Louisiana, that's once in a lifetime. There's a, there's a senior out there who doesn't play that car, who hasn't been the full state championship, that that opportunity could be taken away from. And we just, I'm just not for that. I'm about opportunity and, and togetherness. So I hope we all could get together on it. Last year, I think it was a 42-39 game or something like that. Great game uh, with John Curtis. And so with that being the case, if you start with week three, if that's your first game, who do you start with? What's that first game that would be up on the docket for you? Uh, for us, we would start off, if that if that's the case, we would start with week three upon that would be Warren Easton, then week four will be Baton Rouge Catholic, and week five will be John Curtis. <laughs> that's why I brought it up, because I knew the answer already. So yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds like the ultimate athletic director schedule. I mean, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That, that, that's amazing. But, but you know what, Mr. Chief, what we play in a great state for high school athletics. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's up to us to give people a chance to see the best play the best. And, we you know, we don't run from it. I know the team that we're playing, they don't run from it. This about the kids to play on the, the highest state of football. If they have fans, they don't have fans, we have to stream the game. You know, just to give them an opportunity to, to compete and to play, that's, that's what we're looking for. And we want to play the best people while we're doing it. And, of course, that prepares your team so well for the playoffs. Once you get there, you're not going to face anybody better than you've played already. No, no, no. I think, uh, you know, Curtis, the first game last year we played, and, I mean, that was that was one of the best games that I've been a part of. And then the next week we played McDonald 35, and then after that we played Warren East and then Catley. You know, all teams who went very deep in the playoffs. I think that's the key, playing, playing good opponents and getting ready for the playoffs and, and, and on our way building depth. And, and building camaraderie and building a sense of competition and leadership. And I think that's what football is about, is giving that sense of accountability and discipline. I think you got to let me make the rest of your schedule. Since since you got those three lined up, three, four, and five, my suggestion is week six you play St. Thomas Moore, week seven you play Rummel. Uh, can I keep going? Can I keep making the rest of the schedule for you? Oh, man, we, if, we, if we had rum on, I don't think we'll be able to walk by the time we got to uh, the district. I think that Coach Monica, he, he, that might be a little too much for me. See, I know that's your alma mater, but then tell, tell Coach we could, we'll definitely be interested in playing in the next, <laughs> next, next, next two years. I'm joking, of course, but, but you know yeah. what? The, the, game that, the game that we all wished we would have saw last year was Carr and St. Thomas Moore. I think yeah. that would have been ph- phenomenal, but unfortunately with this system we have, that can't happen, and I still can't stand that, by the way. Yeah, you know, when we, we went to the championships in 2011, and we had a chance to play the quarterfinal game in Lafayette at STM. That's one of the most awesome environments that I've been a part of. We, we was on the top end of that, but, man, what a team that was. And I think, uh, you know, hopefully one day that this, this, the state will come back together, and we're talking about togetherness right now and putting everybody on the same page and on the same playing field. And we could win the best and play the best and compete against the best. I hope one day it returns to that. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, and Monica's gonna be on the show later on. And he went and he went and was dumb enough to schedule a game at St. Thomas Moore in Week Four this year. So let him have some fun going there because uh, that's a hostile <laughs> place, as hostile a place as you're gonna go. And by the way, they were really good last year too, and they'll be really good this year. But those programs are great. Look, Catholic, Catholic's got a heck of a team coming back. Uh, they'll probably be the favorite in Division One, and if they're not. Curtis would be so. You got, you got both of those suckers, and then Warren Easton. I mean, this this trilogy just continues, and it's one of the best trilogies in Louisiana. I know you're glad to just have the edge in that one and to keep it that way. I'm sure that's that's what you plan on doing. But that sucker is some game to watch, man. Yeah, yeah, I, and we look forward to playing all our opponents this year, Mr. T. And I just hope that we get an opportunity to do it. We have a good team coming back, filled with a great senior class, and. You know, great talent and great coaches around them. So I hope, I hope that again that we have an opportunity to, to to show the people that you know that we can compete with the with the better teams in the state in a high classification, and and stay healthy and do it the right way, as as the state has guided us to do. And I want we want an opportunity to show them that we can do that. 
And I think that's, that's the least we can ask for as an opportunity. Well, it's always a pleasure to visit with Bryce Brown, uh, one of the best, if not the best, four consecutive state championships. The Cougars will be going for a fifth this year. Now that it looks like football will be played, let's hope this whole phase business is cleared up and you can play at home, uh, play in New Orleans, and not have to worry about this. And if not, we got to find some solutions. But, Bryce, yeah. listen, thank you for the time. Uh, thank you for everything that you do. Keep up the great work. You hear? Thank you, Mr. Tim. Thank you for all that you do for high school sports, and not just football, all the sports. Well, it's my pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. You hear? Have a good one and stay safe. All right, buddy. Bryce Brown, uh, the Car Cougars. It's Now we talk to the head coach of the undefeated defending 3A state champion, St. James Wildcats. It's great to welcome our friend Robert Valdez to the show. Robert, how are you, my friend? How are you? I'm doing fine, Coach. Great to have you with us. And as I said to Coach Brown earlier, this is a good day for high school football in Louisiana, isn't it? Man, it's unbelievable. It is not humid. It's not muggy. I'm sitting here at the 50-yard line all the way on the top row in beautiful downtown Vasher Wildcat Stadium. And uh, we got the lights on. And it's, like, unbelievable for September the weather tonight. And it looks like the lights are going to be on soon as a result of what happened today with the Louisiana mm -hmm. Education Committee meeting in Baton Rouge. And uh, this can only be looked at as nothing but a, a positive and good development for high school football, right? It is. I mean, you know, we, we, I think that you, you, when you look at it from both sides, um, <clears throat> we were able to, because of the timing, see what other states had done and get a chance to see how they kind of work things out. And, you know, we get to see what worked, what didn't work. And, uh, just glad to be playing, and we get an eight-game season and, um, and a full playoff season. So, therefore, considering the situations, I, I really think that, you know, for us, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that, and I'm pleased with – and I think that our kids have a chance to be able to see that there's, a, you know, something to work for. Yeah, and, and I was going to bring that up next. How important is it for these kids and for the coaches and the parents to know that they're they're going to get an opportunity to play this year? That's big because our kids have been great. You know, I don't know how other kids at other programs are. Our kids have done a really good job of, you know, being here when we need them to be here and doing what they were supposed to do. Um, but you can see it through our practice. You can see, you know, the kids getting a little bit, you know, edgy and a little bit, I guess, disenfranchised because they don't have any idea. We're not game planning for an opponent or whatnot. But um, now that we have a, a an answer, now that we have a definite, you know, start point, then therefore – um, you know, we are, you know, we're looking forward to it. That, that, you know, I haven't had a chance to talk to the kids. We don't have school on Fridays, um, but I'm sure when they, when we get back on Tuesday, um, they're going to be geeked. Visiting with Robert Valdez of St. James. And, of course, uh, the meeting this morning, I've given a lot of credit to the LHSA and, and the executive director, Eddie Bonin, on this one because they have fought for not just football but athletics to be played, period, this year. And... Mm -hmm. To see this happen today, I think it, it bears witness to the, the fact that their efforts were rewarded, and I give them a lot of credit. I think they've done an excellent job in this particular instance. Well, you know, when you're in a situation like Eddie's in with LHSA, it's basically hard to please everyone. And I think that, you know, what they did was they basically followed all of the regulations and, you know, the health standards to the T and, you know, put the, the safety of not only the students but everybody involved with athletics first. And so I commend them for that, you know, but there was never an instance where uh, not playing was on the table. So therefore we just, you know, he's able to fight for that and be able to provide a clear plan for us to be doing that. They're moving to the executive committee next week to make sure that, make sure that everything is ironed out and <clears throat> it'll give us even a clearer picture as what we need to do moving forward. Yep. So it looks like, an eight-game regular season and maybe one round less in the playoffs if the, mm -hmm. if the situation holds up the way it is. So that would mean you'd start with week three. So who would your first opponent be if that is the It'd case? It would be Riverdale. It would be Riverdale. Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. glad that it would be here in, uh, in Bashford, in beautiful downtown Bashford. So um, I, I have a new coach. i got to get in contact with him and, uh, you know, just talk logistics and whatnot. But, um, you know, just grateful to be like, you know what, Ken, to be honest with you, we could be playing in Alaska. We'll find a way to get there. 
I hear you. Yeah, Kyle Walker, <laughs> the new coach at Riverdale. I had him on the show earlier this week, in fact. A good guy uh, comes mm-hmm. from Chalmette. His dad, Richard Walker, a former head coach. And, and so get ready for like a wing T, okay? You don't see that stuff hey, that much, right? That's good. That's good. We see a lot of it <laughs> three. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, man. I used to be St. James. Uh, I used to be St. James with Coach Gailey back in the day, too. With that you are. Wing it, tea, it, so. I think it was one of the best in the country at it, too. Yeah, really good at it. So, Coach, when you know the fact that your team went undefeated last year, won it all, got so many awards, some of which we were proud to nominate you for and get, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you had to you you appreciate that for a lifetime. And yet, how fast did you have to turn the page to focus on what's ahead? You know, it's funny <clears throat> is that you know we had the tremendous success, and you know we're able to win the state championship first time in forty years here. It's I'm talking about the next week. I was like re-energized and reinvigorated, and just the feeling that we you had from finishing something that you start. Oftentimes, people they have an initiative, and you know along the way they don't get a chance to finish. Well, we did, so that energized us, energized our kids. Um, you know, we only have 12 seniors coming back, so we lost a lot, but we got some young guys that that, that are very talented and that are ready to get in the game. So. Um, the good thing is, you know, I don't see any of my kids wearing the championship rings, you know, so they've kind of put that, you know, on the side and, you know, looking to, you know, compete and, uh, get, get a chance. Our slogan this year is to do it again, but be better and find ways to be better. So I think there's a lot of energy. I think there's a lot of enthusiasm. And I think that, you know, we're, you know, we're fighting to not get complacent as a program. Well, I think that's the right approach, of course. And you have a, you have uh, some good players, regardless of the numbers. You don't have the the right. quantity coming back, but you sure have quality. Right. You got two or yes, three sir. kids that are <laughs> that are off the charts good, man. They make me look good, man. You know, the older I get, you know, there's a lot of things working against me in terms of looks, but the kids that I have <laughs> make me look good. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. And, of course, passion runs very, very deep in Vashery. We yes. know what River yes, Parish football is like. It doesn't get any better. So the opportunity yes, to, to come back and play, that's what it's all about. Look, at the end mm-hmm. of the day, like Bryce and I talked about, this isn't about Democrat or Republican. It's not about public or private. No. It's not about black or white or rich or poor. It's about everybody collectively having a chance uh, to see their hard work pay off and have a chance to compete. I, think, I haven't talked to a coach that doesn't want to play yet. I have not spoken right. to one. And, I've, right. I, and I know the players want to play. So. Right. Can we just all agree on this, regardless of parishes or metropolises, and, and just get together? I think this is, this is what brings out the best part of America. Because you know what? When these kids get together and these coaches get together with their programs, all of the societal ills, they go to the side. So when you're competing in athletics and the, the, the whole emphasis on teamwork and loyalty and trust on each other, you know, like a lot of people can really learn from us. A lot of people that have all these convictions and, and they want to pick sides can really just come to a football practice, a volleyball practice, or some type of high school team activity and see a group of kids from all kind of socioeconomical backgrounds and races working together for a common goal. And, you know, we put all those to the side. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> uh, just come out and watch and see how, these kids interact, what they do, yes, and, and the yes. way people genuinely get along, by and large, and yes. nobody pays attention to anything other than competing, and yes, sir. as it should be. Uh, Robert Valdez, St. James High School. Listen, I appreciate the time tonight. Appreciate Thanks, you man. and the work that you do and your friendship, and, and uh, Godspeed to you and your program, and well, I sure hope we're talking about a, a game sometime soon. Yes, sir, man. Thank you. Stay safe, and God bless. You got it, Robert. Thank you. That's Robert Valdez. Of the St. James Wildcats, defending state champions in Class 3A, looking for a chance to defend their title this year. Looks like they're going to get that opportunity, and we are so happy for them with that being the case. Head football coach of the Archbishop Gomer Raiders, who won the Division I state championship in unbeaten fashion a year ago, back to defend their title this year. And it looks like they'll get that opportunity, which is great news. Good to have Nick Monica with us. And Nick, first of all, appreciate the time. And it is a good news day with high school football in Louisiana, isn't it? Hey, Kent, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, it's just uh, great news. And, um, you know, I know the kids are excited and, um, you know, trying to stay positive over the last few months has been 
and keeping them positive has been pretty difficult uh, with so much uncertainty. So glad to, to take a step in the right direction and, and give them something, some positive feedback. Uh, Mr. Bonine saying that, you know, contact in all likelihood can start taking place in about a week's time. That had to be music to the ears, right? Yeah, we, we've been uh, taking it slow as far as pads and, and uh, you know, certain things like that, just really using more of a, a mental approach. And we have so many one-year starters now and new guys that are stepping in that uh, we just need to make sure that uh, mentally they're prepared and, and, uh, and also with their conditioning. So we've been focusing on that, and um, we were planning on putting the pads on the first day on Monday for the first time uh, with Labor Day, and, and uh, so we're going to continue with that. And hopefully by the end of the week, maybe we're cleared to, to get in full pads and maybe a little contact. Of course, Rommel and Jefferson Parish in Metairie and the Jefferson Parish Council earlier this week passing a resolution to ask the governor uh, to allow parishes to decide what phase they're in, clearly wanting to move forward to phase three regardless. That was the first bit of good news. And then, of course, today, the good news uh, in the meeting that took place with the Louisiana House Education Committee and, and seemingly everybody pretty much on the same page, which was great to hear from the Bessie Board to the State Superintendent, Kate Brumley of Public Schools, to the Executive Director, Eddie Bonine. Now it's simply a matter of the Executive Committee signing off on it next Wednesday. And that, frankly, that looks like it's going to be a, a guarantee that it's going to happen. Yeah, you know, it's like you said, it was great news. And, and um, I think everybody's pulling for it, uh, you know, the, the entire state from from uh, not just coaches and players, but you have parents that, that are pushing forward. And, and um, you know, everybody needs a little football right now. And, and I, just no matter what's on TV, you get a little football right now. And I, I think everybody's glued to it. And, um, you know, so I think the, the country can kind of use that right now and, and uh, <laughs> with, with everything that's going on. And, of course, you've had to – just keep encouraging the kids every step of the way, not knowing what was going to happen. Did you share any message with them today once this word came down? We did. We did. Uh, you know, it wasn't our, our best practice, so uh, we used that as a motivator uh, after practice and kind of told them what was going on. And um, You know, kids a lot of times nowadays with social media find out before we do. Uh, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it, it was very positive, but um, – you know, there's a long way to go, and it, just to be able to, to give the guys a starting date, you know, say five weeks from today, you, you know, you get to you get to play a game against somebody else and, and not yourself and, and doing the same old, um, you know, drills and, and things that we've been doing for the past few months. And, um, you know, so definitely a, a motivator for the kids and for us and, and um, excited about going to practice again. Nick Monica of Archbishop Roma with us. This has been kind of a unifying issue because – Public, private, urban, suburban, rich, poor, black, white, everybody I've talked to wants to play. <laughs> so th- this looks like an issue that's been able to galvanize people and bring people together. Yeah, it's, um, you know, like you said, I, I think not just the, the players and coaches, but, you know, the entire community and state and um, surrounding states and, and the entire country, you know, they're, they're pushing for football and especially in the South, you know, people love their football and, and, um, you know, I think it's been, it's, it's going to be great. And, uh, I'm glad that, um, you know, everybody's on board and, and, and the people that, that got together and, and made this, made this decision, made the right one. And, and, um, it's going to be the best thing for the kids. So it looks like they're, they're proposing an eight game schedule and that would mean playoffs would be cut shorter, but that doesn't affect division one because you're already short anyway, with the numbers that you have, so uh-huh. for your division, playing the most regular season games has to be what you would like, right? Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, especially when you lose your spring, you lose your, your scrimmage, you lose your jamboree. So you're going to be using some of those games um, early on in the season, you know, to replace that. And uh, the time missed and, and preparing and getting guys ready, uh, you know, even with their conditioning, just things like that that are sometimes overlooked and, and not seen um, – and the bleachers, you know, but, uh, it's, it's, I I think it's great. And, um, you know, the more that we can get the kids out there and the more games we can give them, um, you know, I think the better. So you would start with Hammond, if that was the case, your week three game. And then uh, you had some, some brilliant person decided they were going to schedule a game going to St. (laughs) Thomas more in week four. Like to know who that imbecile was. That might be (laughs) the most hostile environment in the state. And they, they happen to be about, 
I don't know, as good as anybody in this state last year on the field, too. What the heck are you thinking, man? Yeah, yeah, you, you're talking to the imbecile. Um, but, <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> we were trying to uh, accommodate somebody else. Rustin and Neville have a longstanding rivalry uh, that, right. that is going to be canceled from their week one game. And I would hate to be the reason that they don't get to play that. Um, you know, sure. we we are a um, – we play in a league that is very tradition based and, and I would hate for somebody to, to keep us from that same experience. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be great competition and, and they're going to have a great game as well. Well, uh, Rustin and Neville. So I, I think it works out best for the state and, um, you know, we're definitely going to have our hands full, but, um, you know, it's something that our kids are going to be excited about. And, and, um, you know, so it's, it's something for them to look forward to as well. And last but not least, just the challenge that you have this year. What, 15 starters, I want to say, that have graduated? 14, 15, something like that. Uh, to, it's not starting over again, but it's a major change with the, those dudes that you had last year that aren't there anymore. Yeah, no question. Um, you know, especially on the defensive side of the ball, we lose nine starters. And those guys, um, you know, they were, they were three-year starters, which makes it even more difficult because now you're talking about some guys that um, we do have some some upperclassmen that are going to step in, but they don't have much game experience. And they've been serving as our, our bandits for, for a couple of years now, so they weren't even with us to, to uh, get reps and, and understand how things work. And so it's, it's like starting over, but the one positive is we're starting over with some upperclassmen this year. and You know, hopefully they can catch on a little bit quicker than some of the younger guys. Well, certainly the tradition that is Archbishop Rummel High School football is a terrific one. And last year was just an absolute pleasure to watch that team perform and some great games, a great job by your staff. And, and obviously kids that uh, they know how to win. Anybody that's been around that program, they got a pretty good idea about what it takes to win, right? Yes, sir. And, um, you know, that's what we're trying to, to spread with these guys. And um, I think uh, one of the challenges that comes with, with winning is handling success. And, and, uh, that was kind of the message today. And, um, you know, as we mentioned, it's been pretty difficult trying to keep kids positive and, and motivate them and, uh, with everything that's being said out there. And so hopefully today kind of kicks them in the butt a little bit. And, um, you know, they understand what they're representing. Yep. Well, I'll let you go on this. We, we had Bryce Brown on earlier and I joked with him about trying to improve his schedule since his first three games now, are going to be Warren Easton, Catholic High, and John Curtis in that order. So I joked, uh-huh. I joked with him. I said, Coach, I said, can I continue to make the rest of your schedule? St. Thomas Moore week six and Rumble in week seven. And he said, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not playing your alma mater. Are you kidding me? Uh, you're crazy. And, and uh, of course, that's, uh, we, we joke about it. And yet, when you're really good, that ends up being the case. You end up having to play those type of teams because – that's who will play you, basically, right? Yeah, it's um, it's been a struggle, you know. Even looking forward to twenty one and twenty two, it's um, it's been kind of crazy. Um, I had a coach the other day that said that, it, you know, it, it looks like there's going to be about twelve to fourteen schools that every time we reschedule, they're going to just going to have to suck it up and play each other, and uh, it's it's looking that way. So it's it's definitely been difficult, but um, and I guess that's a good problem to have, you know, to have some success and and people to not want to play well the good news is it looks like high school football is going to be played and it's going to be played soon which would be october 8th 9th and well we're sure looking forward to that and we'll get romo games on 1061 fm again this year and sure look forward to it nicholas and i appreciate the time tonight it's great news for the school community and good news for everybody overall let's just hope they settle their issues in orleans parish since that's a big part of your league right Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I think the, I think they'll jump on board too after they they uh, sit down and think about what's best for the kids and, and the community. Yep. I, I hope you're right. Otherwise, uh, tell them to call Carl Nini. We'll get him to come play at Joe Yenny <laughs> or Los Memphis, right? So, I mean, whatever it takes. That's all I can say. Yep. These kids deserve it. Nick, thank you. Appreciate it. Keep up the great work here. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate y'all having me. My pleasure. It's Nick Monica, the head coach of the Rummel Raiders.